In introductory algebra, we've learned how to graph a linear equation a few different ways. My favorite way is to get the equation in slope-intercept form. That means to get the y term all alone. So I'm going to add 9x to both sides of this equation. I better come over here and write and remind you that y equals mx plus b is called slope-intercept form. On the left-hand side, it means I have a 3y left. And on the right side, I'm going to put the 9x in front and then the minus 12 because I'd like to see my mx plus my b. Um, and, and yet, I'm not quite, oops, didn't mean to erase all that. Um, let's see, that was my 9x. Uh, I still have to divide by 3 to get y alone. Be careful and make sure you divide both terms over here by the 3. I think I lost a minus sign there. And so now what I have is y equals 9 divided by 3, which is just 3x. 12 divided by 3, which is just a minus 4. And this is called my y-intercept. So I'm going to go to my graph paper, and I'm going to go to the spot where on my y-axis, y is equal to a negative 4. And then the slope of this line is a positive 3. And slope is defined as your change in y over your change in x. And since my slope is a 3, I just put a 1 underneath that so that I could recognize this. I'm going to do this with a different color. That I needed to go up 3 and then to the right 1. I might even erase that a little bit here. I'm going to go back again. Um, so I started with my y-intercept right here at a negative 4, and I went up 3 and over 1 to my next ordered pair. I could go up 3 and over 1 again with this positive slope and keep doing that so it would be easier for me to draw my straight line. But really, you know, the answer to this problem is this green line, and I'm supposed to be drawing it straight. And I have to have arrowheads on it. That's the graph of the equation 3y minus 9x equals a negative 12, and I find it to be easiest to do this in slope-intercept form. You can pick numbers for x and solve for y, but both of these equations are nasty, nasty problems in that uh, the coefficients in front of the x term and the y term don't always divide into 6 ev evenly. So it's best, I think, to get this, to get y alone. I would personally, in this case, add 2y to both sides. So I could get the y on the right-hand side, and it would be positive. So I would have, then, a negative 5x equals this negative 6 plus 2y. And now I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And so I will have, I'm trying to decide where to write this, um, a negative 5x plus the 6 equals the 2y. And finally, I have to divide both sides by 2. And make sure you do that to all terms. And so right here, the negative 5 over 2 is the slope. The 6 over 2 is a positive 3. That's the y-intercept. And the, I can graph the equation with this information. So I'm going to go right here to the positive 3 as my y-intercept with a slope of a negative 5 over 2. I need you to know that a negatively sloping line only has one negative, one uh, downturn, if you will. It's, it really is a negative 5 divided by a positive 2. So I'm going to drop down 5, and then I'm going to go to the right a positive 2 and put my next ordered pair. I could, if I wanted to, go down 5 again and go to the right 2 to get my next ordered pair. I could even go up 5 and to the left 2 if I wanted to, but I've run out of graph paper. I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line and put arrowheads on it and extend up a little bit this way. And that green line, which represents um, a negative 5x minus 2y equals the negative 6.